Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Edward M. Burke. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, Ed. We're glad you could make it out on this rainy evening. Well, I'm delighted to be here with you, David, and to uh, talk a little bit about the uh, sesquicentennial of Abraham Lincoln's nomination. Before we jump into that, let's uh, tell people a little bit about yourself, maybe a little bit of your family history and how you, you got to be where you are today. Well, as you indicated in uh, your introduction, my father was my predecessor. Um, he passed away... Uh, it will be 42 years now, uh, May uh, 25th, and um, I was elected to uh, succeed him. So um, a Burke has been the alderman of the 14th Ward in Chicago since 1953, uh, and God willing, the uh, voters will uh, keep that uh, going for another few years. You also were a, were a policeman, and you and I were talking backstage that we're both sons of policemen. And uh, I, I find that interesting, that, that you could turn a career as a policeman into a, a career in politics. Is that a natural transition? It, it's not unnatural. Um, and uh, I, I've said many times that when I was uh, a Chicago cop, I, I probably learned more than uh, I could in any law school or any college. It was a great uh, education from uh, some very... Uh, uh, dedicated people and some very smart people who served in law enforcement, and I'm, I'm grateful for having had that experience. Now, it seems to me an unusual transition from cop to historical author. How did you make that transition? I've been interested in, in Chicago history and in Illinois history uh, since my days in uh, college, and, and the more that uh, I learn about uh, the rich uh, stories of uh, Chicago and, and Illinois, the more I'm convinced that, uh, that people should learn about history as a way of uh, avoiding mistakes that have been made by people in the past. And the more you learn about this, the, I think the more able you are to contribute to the governance of uh, our city and our state. How did you specifically get the idea for Inside the Wigwam? What, what was the... Uh the um, impetus for that? It actually grew out of an uh, event uh, I was attending for DePaul University with uh, my co-author, uh, Craig Souter. And in the course of this dinner conversation, we were talking about the fact that the 1996 Democratic Convention was coming to Chicago after a hiatus of some 25 years. And how sad it was that all people remembered about Chicago and political conventions was the 1968 uh, convention. But they didn't realize that uh, Abraham Lincoln was nominated in Chicago in 1860, that that's where uh, William Jennings Bryan delivered his famous cross of gold speech, that that was where uh, Teddy Roosevelt lost his comeback bid uh, in 1912, where um, FDR was nominated in 1932, 1940, 1944, when he uh, was able to engineer the ouster of a sitting vice president, a replacement with uh, uh, Harry Truman, where Adlai Stevenson, of course, was nominated in 1952 and 1956, where Richard Nixon was nominated in 1960. And so all those uh, events took place in Chicago, and in many instances, what happened in Chicago at those conventions set the stage for a remarkable changes not only nationwide but worldwide. It was almost as if um, people in Chicago who had come from around the nation t to gather uh, rose to uh, the occasion during crisis and, and uh, perilous times. It's actually hard to imagine, isn't it, that uh, someone other than Franklin D. Roosevelt would have led the nation from 1940 to 1944 during the Second World War. But remember that FDR had sent a letter to the convention saying he did not seek to be nominated for the third term. There had been no other president in the history of the nation who had served more than two terms. 
Now, uh, was it fortuitous then that the Republican Convention, convention of 1860 was held in Chicago? What, what was the reasoning behind the Republicans selecting Chicago? Uh, Judge Davis and Lincoln supporters were able to convince the uh, national leaders of the Republican Party who had been meeting in New York about where to cite their convention, that it was very important to have the western states, the western states uh, including Illinois and Wisconsin, um, because it was a foregone conclusion that Seward was going to be the nominee. So um, they convinced the leaders that uh, if Seward was going to be the nominee, he was going to need support from the western states. And the best way to generate that kind of support would be to have the party gathering, the convention, take place in Chicago um, in the western part of the nation. Let's tell people a little bit about who Davis and Fell are. Who, who are these people? Because they're going to play an integral role in the convention. So can we explain a little bit who these people are? Uh, Judge Davis was um, an early supporter, along with Fell, uh, of Abraham Lincoln. And uh, as you mentioned, 150 years ago today in Decatur, in their own wigwam, they were able to rally the Republican convention delegates from Illinois to get behind their favorite son, uh, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, but then they went off to uh, Chicago and uh, went to work, uh, corralling uh, delegates from around the country, uh, making deals, if you will, even though Abraham Lincoln sent a telegram to Chicago, make no deals. Judge Davis said, he's not here. He doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know what we're faced with. We'll worry about that later on. That was a, a strange, at least from today's standards, that's a strange way to run a convention. Your candidate doesn't come to the convention. How did that or did it work in Lincoln's favor in this case? Well, they never came to uh, conventions in those days. The uh, convention would meet. Party leaders would uh, uh, work it out, sometimes in smoke-filled rooms. Uh, there was massive deal-making, but they were all... Party, uh, party professionals. There was no um, amateurs. They were all senators and congressmen and governors and, and uh, longtime party leaders. Uh, and of course, the candidate would remain at home, and then a, a, a committee would uh, travel to the uh, site where the candidate was residing and then uh, present him with an uh, invitation to be their uh, nominee. Uh, but that was not rare. Um, uh, at the time. But the, the whole venue, the, the uh, setup in Chicago was designed by Abraham Lincoln's supporters to lend itself to the uh, nomination of Abraham Lincoln, who we say in our book, and keep in mind this was published in 1996, was the darkest dark horse in the history of uh, American politics. Uh, it was published long before our present uh, president became the Democratic nominee.